what's going on YouTube? It's your boy OGTMA and me. And as you can see, I'm here with a video by Jamari, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, I already liked the video, Jamari. And it is about academics getting sued. DJ Academics. Now, I just recently heard about this story. I don't know too much on the background about it. But all I know is it's some shit. So sit down, buckle in, you know, let me turn that up. And not too loud. But without that being said, let's get straight into the video. Yeah. Hold up. Okay, my bad, my bad. Let's get to the video. Throughout the course of the last couple of weeks, it's safe to say that DJ Academics had possibly reached his peak as a content creator. With him being the biggest hip hop blogger and Drake lover for the last decade, <laughs> Kendrick versus Drake was an insane time for him where hundreds of thousands of people were tuning into his streams and sharing his clips, garnering billions of impressions across Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Somebody's lying, I can see the vibes on act. Even he looking compromised. Let's peel the layers back. How am I compromised? Why are you saying me for? But now Ack has been in the news for a whole nother reason, as a woman has now stepped forward and is alleging and defamation. Oh. Fazia Abashi is the name of the woman who filed the lawsuit against academics. This coming only months after the situation began to go public and she had even posted this video at that time. I look crazy right now, but I'm not gonna stand here and let this man continue to lie about me. That's not what happened, academics. You know that that's not what happened. And for you to pretend that you didn't do anything, for you to pretend that you didn't do anything, that I just went to your house and I'm just some thought, like we didn't know each other for two years. Mm. You tried to save yourself after your friends assaulted me. Whether or not you got drunk or not, I know that when you woke up, you were on top of me too. No. You me too, and a test. No. Oh, what is with y'all and these fucking females? See that? That that that's exactly why. Mm -mm -mm. That's that shit. Ah. Oh. First it was fucking. My bad. First it was fucking Drake with these allegations. Now it's academics with the women. What is with y'all? I can't do this shit with y'all. It was done. You know what? I'm gonna come back with my own story. Let's hope she's not lying. This is what you wanted, and you're about to get it. I've been quiet for way too long. And now she is indeed coming forward with her own story, and things are definitely gonna heat up as it plays out in the eyes of the public. And the reason that she even made this video in the first place is all because DJ Academics' ex-girlfriend Cheyenne was trying to expose him online. And it's like, y'all gonna see later on when the girl come out with her own story, like... And the internet detectives kind of started to put two and two together. This story was catching some major steam at the end of 2023, and Swack did an entire response stream to try and defuse this bomb. Release this video because it makes him look so stupid. When you have so much to lose, you have to be much more in control than this. And inviting people to your house and passing out from intoxication is just an incredibly idiotic move. Oh, like, God. to me, you're just begging for some sort of legal consequence. See, that's why y'all gotta stay on the swivel. Don't be inviting everybody to your crib. Even if it's just a hit and quit, go to a motel and be smart. Don't get drunk, that man. Even that night, like, that night would be the good guy. Look, I'm not saying these allegations are a fact by any means. Yeah. I'm just saying that he created an environment where he had his two boys over, he invited this girl over, and then he told them that she was on a promiscuous vibe before he passed out for seven hours straight. Those Damn. are all things that he said. That all came out of his mouth. But I'm feeling the way because I'm like, when he came to my crib and just my isn't really think I don't know type shit. Like I said, y'all got a whole video of, of of whatever happened. And she was like, "What are you talking about?" She's I, I still think she playing dumb. I'm like, I, I'm just trying to make sure yo you good whatever you did last night. I ain't think you was that type of girl, but. It. It's cool. And for the guys who's watching, this is what being a good guy gets you. Because I could have acted like nothing happened. But once again, he created this interaction and brought the people together. So in my mind, he at least has some responsibility in the aftermath of that situation. Exactly. Like maybe this woman didn't realize what happened. She went and got tested and something suspicious came up. And then if she wants to go back and see the evidence, I don't really see an issue with that. This would eventually result in a raid of his house. They put me, my mom, Cheyenne in cuffs. 
They bring me down to the That should have been evident to him years ago. How someone could still be this green and leaving themselves vulnerable for bad shit to happen <laughs> on their property is just beyond stupidity. That's not even to mention his- Yeah, this guy needs to stop being so reckless. Drinking every day at 8 a.m. for 10 years is just ridiculous. He would even go on stream and share these text messages from the two after the incident occurred. I tell her, yo, you should go get tested, like, because- like, okay, granted, you didn't mean to whatever, whatever, but you have the two dudes unprotected. You should probably go get tested. This is what I say to her. I mean, I'm, I said, I mean, not sure what you want me to say. That's why I asked you while you were here, if everything you did while I was sleeping, you were okay with doing. Remember I told you, I said, I asked, I said, before I got to confront, I said, yo, yo, everything you did last night, you were cool with doing, right? And she was like, yeah, I had fun. She said, well, I was sleeping. You were okay with doing it. You said, yeah. So, I don't know. I was passed out for most of it, but I'd, I'd wake up now and then. Also, I was in shock. I got most of the information from you. Remember, I'm watching this shit like, yo, bro, you know, it's like I'm watching on the camera from you. Before then, I never met the other guy. So he just took the opportunity, I guess. Personally, I think her lawyer is going to have an absolute field day with this information. He oh, chose God. to divulge to his massive audience. In fact, at this point, I do kind of want to get down to the nitty gritty of this lawsuit. She's being defended by the same lawyer who is handling the Rodney Jones suit against Diddy. His name is Tyrone Blackburn. And we'll get back to why that's important here in a sec. You can always call him Tyrone. <laughs> if y'all know what movie that's from, you're a real nigga. On or about July 16, 2022, <laughs> defendant Allen contacted Miss Abashi and invited her to come to his house and visit him in New Jersey. Even though it had been almost a year since they last saw each other, Abashi did not expect any ill intentions and agreed. She was accustomed to visiting Allen at his home in New Jersey, and Mr. Allen would send a car to pick her up. Miss Abashi lives in Pennsylvania. On the day of the incident, when Abashi arrived to enjoy her evening, Little did she know that defendant Livingston Allen and his two accomplices, John Doe 1 and 2, would violate her. The morning after the incident, Abashi was unaware of what happened. She only became aware after Mr. Allen showed her surveillance footage of her being essayed by John Doe 1 and 2 on his pool deck. Abashi was in shock and fearful after the reality of what had occurred set in. In the aftermath, Abashi reported Allen and his accomplices' actions to the police. A violation kit was performed, evidencing that Miss Abashi had been essayed. Since reporting the horrific violations, Abashi chose silence and remained silent until on or about December 30th, 2023, when Mr. Allen took to social media and defamed Abashi. Allen accused Abashi of voluntarily having an with his friends at his home while maintaining that he never participated at all. This led to a spew of public slander as Alan's account of what happened spread like wildfire on multiple media outlets. And all that comes from that one hour video I showed you guys clips of earlier. As detailed below, Alan made several public statements defaming Abashi surrounding the events of her assault. She was filled with anger and all the suppressed painful memories of that horrific night resurfaced. In her state of anger, Abashi released a video addressing Mr. Allen's involvement in her essay, which I also showed you guys earlier. When Abashi's account was published, Allen lashed out with false statements. Allen denied involvement, even though upon information and belief that Allen's spermicide was discovered on the violation kit, this all publicly no. damaged Abashi. Yo ass was doing no. Oh, you gonna lie and then they find Joe. Yeah, y'all yeah, see what that say. I'm, I'm not gonna reread that. But yeah, that shit's crazy, dude. Like, come on now. You gonna lie. Invitation even further. Before her arrival, Mr. Allen had notified his friends, John Doe 1 and 2, that this woman would be coming over and she was on a different type of vibes. A different type of vibes is an indication that Abashi would be coming over to engage in sexual activity. So already they are using that live stream against academics as factual information. Mm. When Abashi arrived at Mr. Allen's home, everything seemed normal apart from the neighborhood power outage. John Doe 1, a friend of Alan, greeted her. Abashi was taken aback because Alan did not tell her anyone else would be at his home upon her arrival. She did not suspect anything suspicious, so she entered the home. John Doe 1 invited Abashi into the kitchen and introduced her to John Doe 2, another one of Mr. Allen's friends. Due to the power outage, the three of them sat in the kitchen together. Abashi engaged in small talk with them patiently while waiting for Mr. Allen to appear. 
John Doe 1 insisted they prepare Miss Abashi's drink, and unbeknownst to Abashi, John Doe 1 was Mr. Aunt's manager or employee, and he asserted his position by telling Abashi that he was in charge until Mr. Allen arrived. As odd as the encounter was, Abashi obliged and allowed John Doe 1 and John Doe 2 to fix her a drink. As the trio so conversed, Abashi asked like for Mr. They're Allen they're and was told to hold on. John Doe 1 then left the kitchen to find Mr. Allen, and when he came back, he said that Allen would join them shortly. Abashi believed this was true and did not go to find Mr. Allen herself because the home was completely dark. Admittedly, Abashi recalls having an eerie feeling, but she ignored it because she did not believe that Allen, whom she had known for nearly two years, would harm her or allow her to be harmed. Shortly after the power had returned, John Doe 1 asked Abashi if she wanted to use the hot tub or pool and wait for Mr. Allen there. Abashi said she'd be okay with the hot tub. Guys, if you're looking to go back to school, Mm -mm -mm. He should have been there to greet her. She shouldn't have took no drink, uh, been comfortable with that. She was also under the impression well, that John Doe 1 and 2 would leave still, after putting the hot tub on, as their actions and gestures made it appear that they were heading out. So she enters the hot tub alone. Shortly after, John Doe 1 appears from inside the house and proceeds to join her in the hot tub. Shortly after, John Doe 2 appeared with a bottle of alcohol, and they began forcing her to take shots of the alcohol. Mm. Eventually, Abashi recalls beginning to feel strange. It was not simply a feeling of intoxication, as Abashi had only half of the first drink and a few sips of the new drink that John Doe 1 had drunk. provided her as she entered the hot tub. Abashi began feeling extremely hot as if her body was on fire. She felt extremely lightheaded and dizzy. Now this is when the alleged incident occurs and the details are extremely graphic. She claims the two men violated her while she lost function of her body. She then claims after the incident that she was woken up at 4am by academics also violating her. And like I said earlier, they claim they have evidence of this when she did the test kit to see if she had been violated, and his DNA was allegedly found. According to Miss Abashi, she woke up confused the following morning and searched for Mr. Allen. She looked around the house and found him in the basement on his computer. She sat on the floor next to him, and he asked her if she knew that his friends had ran a ch on her, to which she said no. He kept asking, are you sure? Mr. Allen then asked her to follow him into another room, where he showed her the contents of a small trash can that had what appeared to be vomit in it and two gold magnum condom wrappers and asked, you don't remember this? Abashi was still in disbelief. She had zero recollection of ever being in that room the prior night. She then claims that academics would show her the footage from the security camera. Mr. Allen then assured her that everything was okay. And as he spoke, he noticed Abashi's demeanor began to change. Alan then hastily told her that his mother was on the way and would be there shortly and proceeded to order her a lift back to Pennsylvania. Mr. Allen asked her where her clothing was. She responded that she had it. He stood there with a suspicious look on his face. Abashi later learned from the police that Alan had disposed of several items, bedsheets, etc., at the dumpster near his office. Presumably, Alan was attempting to destroy the evidence of Abashi's violation. Mm. Abashi says bye to Mr. Allen and leaves his home. According to her, she would call him while still in the lift, asking for more answers. This is when she says he began to blame her and ridicule her. Still trying to get answers, she pled with him, even apologizing for what occurred, as she was desperate to learn of the series of events that led to Alan and his accomplices attack on her. She says she would then ask Alan, Well, you said that it was both of them, but you only showed me one. Can you please send me proof of this? To which Alan sent a screenshot of the attack on Abashi laid out on the concrete in front of the pool. And this is when she would contact the police and have the test done. They would then allegedly have her call academics on a wired phone call where he would allegedly admit to sleeping with her. According to Miss Abashi on this call, Mr. Allen graphically recounts and admits to having course with Abashi, oh, no, even going so as far as to describe her for as being loose, stating, I know what your feels like. That shit felt loose. The document then showed. Now, why would you say that? That's so fucked up. See, this is why females say niggas ain't shit nowadays. And I believe them. And this shit don't make no sense. I swear to God. Various bruises and cuts on her body that look pretty bad yeah. that she claims came from this incident. And they also go into detail how academics incriminated himself via social media post. And a lot of the information they have comes from that hour-long video he did, as well as the live stream where he shared the text messages. Mr. Allen knew that his statements on December 30th, 2023 were misleading and false, 
as he was in possession of text messages from Ms. Abashi where she stated that she did not know what happened to her on July 16, 2022, and that it was Mr. Allen who informed her of the night's events. She even expressed to him the fact that she was really hurt and needed to seek medical attention and a violation kit. I'm going to get tested this week. Think you should too, to make sure you're good. Yes, I'm going now. I'm hurt really bad. It's unlike me to do this, and I don't even know the other guy's name, so I was just laying there. And then around a day later, you called. I'm considering going in for a violation testing kit for us to figure this out. Because it's bits and pieces I remember, and I'm still not okay. I mean, not sure what you want me to say. That's why I asked you while you were here if everything you did while I was sleeping you were okay with doing. And you said yeah, so I don't know. I was passed out for most of it, but I wake up now and then. Also, I was in shock. I got most of the information from you. Before then, I never met the other guy, so he just took the opportunity, I guess. That's why I told you I don't judge. Just trying to make sure you made the choice to do whatever you wanted to do. Always with you, but not this time around. I blacked out. I remember you waking me up during the night. They said you were trying to call and bring your friend to join in. LOL. Since Mr. Allen went on his defamatory tirade about Abashi, several other women have come forward with eerily similar accounts of Allen befriending them, Mm. them, inviting them to his house, getting them intoxicated, and then assaulting them. Upon information and belief, because of these subsequent victim accounts, Mr. Mm. Allen has a pattern and practice of engaging in behavior. Upon information and belief, several women have mm. come forward and said that Allen mm. contacted them when they were still minors, forged a fake friendship until they were 18. No, this nigga pulled a drink. Oh! Oh God. Yep, you're not. Yep, yep. At first I was like, it seemed look well, you're not being the case. I'm just going ahead and tell you that right now. And then attempted to sleep with them. As a result of Mr. Allen's social media tirade against Debashi, Allen has committed defamation per se and foolishly admitted that he and his friends had course with Debashi on July 16, 2022. And despite his lawyers basically telling him to shut the hell up, academics would boot up his stream as this news was breaking yesterday and had this to say. I'm gonna go against my very high-priced attorney's um, advice today. I spoke on this in December. The police came, they looked, we gave him everything. Pretty much everything is documented. Caught on videotape, they got to see it with their own two eyes. Not only did they say, act you good. And this is not just word of mouth. This is, you're officially cleared. We could not bring any criminal charges. You are not criminally liable. Academics is a innocent man who has not ever been charged with anything of the sort that has to do with any deviancy or anything He's like that. Good. Has never been charged, will never be charged. That's a fact. Basically, he's now claiming that this woman is only trying to get money out of him, as he calls it a shakedown. This is a shakedown. This is a money tree situation. He's also claiming that this lawyer has a personal vendetta against him due to his coverage of the Rodney Jones versus Diddy lawsuit. Do you know who's the lawyer representing whoever against me? Y'all know the lawyer? Could it be a lawyer that I've covered? Could it be a lawyer that not so long ago I did a stream putting up on the screen saying that lawyer might be out here trying to shake people down for money. That immediately the day after that, that lawyer allegedly reached out to some people of mine saying, if Ack continues to doubt what we are purporting against Diddy, remember, we could file a lawsuit on him too. And then he also speculates that this has to do with him recently reaching his pinnacle of his career. Chat, would y'all all agree that right now academics has the most attention he's ever had probably in his career? Yes or no? Just say yes or no. It's really I'm really the middle and like the most important non-rapper in the biggest beef and biggest altercation. I want to say within my lifetime in hip hop. And some of the things he says here is just like, dude, put a sock in it. Shut up. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this about everybody in the industry. I'm going to tell y'all all this right now. If act ever goes down, y'all all go down with me. Because I hold no secrets for nobody. 
Mm. Overall, like with any other case, I would not be taking a side at this moment. But damn, did academics make several horrible decisions, not only during, but after this alleged incident occurred. Stop being driven by your ego. Stop being driven by your emotions. It's clear to me, based on the things that have happened to academics over the years regarding women and his quote-unquote homies, that he has a serious case of arrested development. I mean, he even claims here that he's excited to see this all play out in court. So we're going to see what happens with this situation. That's the end of the video. Um, Damn. I don't even know what to say. It's just like... Every time I pull up fucking YouTube, it's always something about a female. Y'all are some fucking slow people in the mind. I'm sorry for all the cuss. It just makes zero sense. Why would you even do that? Why would you leave somebody who trusted you in the house with two other people? That that That's just the first thing. Then second, you just... Oh... I ain't got nothing else to say, but that's that's just stupid as fuck. But anyway, it's your boy OGT Main signing out. You dig?